This episode of Lifehacker is brought to you by Carbonite. Welcome to Lifehacker. This week's episode is all about automation. We're going to look at ways to automate your home, your computer, your backups, and more. So let's get started. Okay, so let's say you ripped a lot of DVDs and you have all of these videos that aren't in a format compatible with your iPod or Android phone or Apple TV. Instead of running each and every one of those videos through Handbrake, you can set up a program called Drop Folders, which will just watch one folder on your hard drive constantly. Any videos you put into that folder, it'll automatically funnel the Handbrake for converting. Then you can just sync them to your device. And you'll never have to manually convert another video again. Hit the link to see how to set it up. Doesn't it suck when you've driven away from your house and you're not sure whether you turned off your AC or even closed your garage door? If you have home automation, you can check on your phone or on your iPad or even on a computer to make sure you've done all these things. So with home automation, you can turn on and off the lights, control your TV system, or even just set your alarm when you're about to head out. I've had it set up in my house, so let me show you how it works. One of the simplest features of home automations is turning on and off lights. These simple light switches act as simple light switches, and these more complex ones do scenes, such as turning on your AC or turning off all your lights when you're about to go to bed. Or you can pick up your iPhone or tablet, access the Control 4 app, and turn on and off lights no matter where you are. In addition to being able to turn on and off your lights, you can also lock or unlock your door. So when you go out for a bike ride and you don't want to carry a bunch of keys, all you need to do is carry your phone. When you get back, it'll unlock the door and turn on the lights for you as you're entering the, your house. And you can even set it up to open your garage door. And these light switch lights actually have a functional purpose too. If this one is red, that means the garage door is open. So I can easily close that. Another feature of the home automation system is that it can act as a universal remote. So your remote connects to this box, which looks like a DVR, and it can also control your TV via the TV interface. So you can sit on your couch and thumb through all the stuff we've talked about, like turning on your lights or opening your garage door. You can connect to this using your iPhone app or your web browser or anything that otherwise talks to Control 4 technology. Unfortunately, this thing needs to be installed by a professional installer. Uh, this goes the same for Crestron if you're interested. Uh, the problem with that is that even if you're a DIY guy, you can't buy the parts yourself, you can't program it yourself because they have some kind of rule about this only needs to go through resellers. So keep that in mind. So if you're interested in setting up home automation for yourself and you're not going to move for a couple years, go to Lifehacker for more details. Even if you aren't a programmer, there are still some nice ways to automate repetitive, monotonous tasks in your computer. You can use something like Automator on the Mac, or if you're a Windows user, use an Automator clone called Actions. Here's how it works. Instead of writing complex code, you can automate a lot of tasks, especially tasks that work with a bunch of different files, using Actions for Windows, or the built-in Automator on Mac OS X. It's extremely simple to use. Just find different actions that you want to perform from the left sidebar, and drag them into a visual workflow in the right-hand pane. You can batch resize images, batch rename a group of files in sequential order, or even turn annoying terminal commands into simple keyboard shortcuts, all in the span of just a few minutes. That's just one simple example, but really the only limit is your imagination. Hit the link on Lifehacker to see more instructions on how it works and for more example workflows. More and more, the fragments of your life exist in digital form on hard drives, whether that's on your computer or on your Android or iPhone. As such, backing up is more important than ever. Here's how to automate the process across your devices. You've got a lot of options for backing up on a desktop computer, but my favorite is a free app called Crash Plan. Available for Mac, Windows, and Linux, Crash Plan can back up locally to a computer on your network, it can back up to the cloud, and it can even back up to a friend's computer across the internet. The paid plan is all you need if you want to back up to the Crash Plan cloud, and for something like $5 a month, you can back up all of your data from your computer, and it just takes a few seconds to set up. You install it on your computer, you say what you want to back up, and it takes care of the rest for eternity. So I'd recommend installing Crash Plan, and you will never have to worry about losing a file again. 
In your smartphone, backup is a little bit less about backing up your personal files and a bit more about saving your apps, settings, and other data so if you switch phones or flash a new ROM, you don't have to spend all that time setting up your phone again. On Android, our favorite two backup apps are Titanium Backup and My Backup. You do need to be rooted for most of the cool features, but as we've shown you in a previous episode, it's not that difficult to do. You can set them both to run regular batch backups of your apps, settings, and pretty much any of your other data, so you can just set it and forget it. It'll back up to Dropbox or to your SD card, so you can restore it at any time. iTunes is pretty great for backing up your iOS device, but it doesn't back up everything. For example, your camera roll isn't necessarily synced over unless you're syncing that explicitly. So if you're jailbroken, you can use a great little app called Package Backup, which will take care of all those extra things. It syncs to Dropbox, and it can also sync certain information to your address book as a contact. And what that'll do is not only let you back up all that extra data, but it'll also let you back up all your jailbreak apps. So when you update iOS and you want to install them again, you can just use Package Backup to restore them very easily. And there you have it. Just takes a few seconds to set up, but once you've done it, you'll make sure all your data is safe going forward. This week on Lifehacker, we walked through why brand loyalty is mostly foolish. We are all creatures of habit and get used to specific brands, but in many cases it costs us unnecessary cash, and sometimes even a quality product. Like any bad habit, it can take work to break out of your brand loyalty, but it'll save you money in the long run. Check out the post for more details, and while you're at it, look at our list of products you should always buy generic. Next up, we showed you how to upgrade your Hackintosh to Lion. Upgrading your machine to Lion has taken quite a bit of finagling in the past, but the folks over at Tony Mac have just released Unibeast, a utility that should make it a breeze. Check out the post and the site for details, but before you do anything, make sure you actually want Lion on your machine. Finally, GitHub developer Zach Holman published a non-designer's guide to making quality presentation slides. Presentations are an art form and slides are an effective way of communicating information, but if your slides are bad, your message often suffers. No matter what your occupation, you're probably going to have to do some public speaking and presenting at some point in your life, so check out the post and source guide for all the details. Photoshop is a really powerful application, but a lot of the things that you might want to do in it can become kind of tedious, like color correction or resizing photos. Fortunately, you have an actions panel in Photoshop that will let you automate all of these things. You can do even more than that. Pretty much anything you can record in Photoshop can be automated so long as you don't introduce any big variables in it. And so it's more than just resizing images and color correction. You can apply filters, you can make things transparent, you can choose blending layers, and you can make contact sheets, add frames, all sorts of things. So really, it's up to you what you want to do. And if you're going to create an action, all you have to do is go in the actions panel, press record, uh, do all the stuff that you want to do, do your color correction, resize your image, save it out, whatever, and then you can hit stop and then hit play on it again and it will continue to do that process in a fraction of the time that you would have to do it yourself. It's really handy and it can make all your work go a whole lot faster. Hungry? Thirsty? The refreshment stand is open. Computer disasters eventually happen to everyone. But if you get Carbonite's online backup before your disaster happens, then you've got no need to worry. With Carbonite, your files will be backed up automatically and safely off-site, so you can easily get them back whenever you want. Plus, you can get anytime, anywhere access to your files from any computer, smartphone, or iPad with the free app. Best of all, Carbonite's unlimited backup is just $59 a year for your PC or Mac. And when you use the offer code LIFEHACKER at checkout, and get your first few months free with purchase. All the details are at carbonite.com and remember to use that offer code LIFEHACKER when you sign up. You'll be supporting the show and getting your first two months free with purchase. And now, it's showtime. All right, it's time for the downloads of the day. Let's see what we've got. First things first, backing up your computer or smartphone is one of those things you don't want to leave to your memory or chances are you will never do it. Check out our top disk cloning and backup apps for every platform as each one has automation baked right in. Next up, Volume Concierge is a Windows app that automatically controls your computer's volume based on a schedule. If you frequently leave your computer's sound on overnight by accident, for example, you can use this app to make sure your machine mutes itself. Tasks Till Dawn is a Mac app that'll let you schedule tasks in Apple Scripts to run at specified times. You can even set up schedules when you're looking to repeat the same actions regularly. 
Juice Defender for Android helps you eke out a little extra battery life by automatically disabling power-sucking features like cellular data and Wi-Fi when you don't need them. If your battery could use a little extra help keeping a charge, check it out. Finally, we have System Silencer for Windows. It's an automation app that'll schedule various tasks to be performed the moment your system is idle. Whether you want your display to turn off or an app to run, it'll take care of things for you. That's it for this week. Hopefully we've cut down on some of the tedious things you do every day. We'll see you next time.